bring in Kenny Polcari. Kenny, you say this is not the time to panic. I don't think there's any time to panic, frankly. I think panic causes bad decisions to be made. But uh, right. uh, do you think this is just a one-day thing we see here? Well, it might be more than a one-day thing. Look, partly is the market. We've all been talking about how the market's overstretched, that it needs to digest, yeah. that it needs to pull back a little bit. It's got nothing but straight up. And so the market was, on the one hand, looking for a reason to back off. So it may not be a one-day stretch. I think today's action, look, European markets are down 3.5%. If the Dow's going to be down 3.5%, expect to see losses of 1,250 points by the end of the day or 170 points on the S&P if it were to hold true. It's also a half a day here. There's a lot of people not in their offices. The action being driven by algorithms. So I wouldn't necessarily, you know, light my hair on fire because today's the, you know, the end of the world. It's not at all. I think you have to take it for what it is, take the headline for what it is. No, it's very unclear still, you know, the transmissibility of this headline, I mean, of this virus, or whether or not it's going to be more deadly than the virus. There's a lot of speculation, but there's no, there's no definitive answer. So the last thing you want to do is, you know, run for the door and go, oh, my God, and start throwing everything out the window. Absolutely not what you want to do. Take it all in stride. And look, even if the market backs off 3.5% today and another 2% next week, that's still only 5%. That's still well within what would be considered a very normal trading range. And considering, you know, we're in the middle of this turbulent time, the Fed changing tapering policy, the talk of interest rate increases right. ahead of even right. what the market expects is all going to cause some turbulence. I so think to I, strap in. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what's going on here is that the market was caught sideways by the Delta variant. They didn't think Delta yes. was going to be particularly because the vaccines were just coming out and, and we hadn't seen a we'd seen a lot of uh, variants fall relatively flat. But Delta came in like gangbusters and it continued all around the world. They don't want to be caught flat footed again as they were with Delta. That's why they're taking so much off the top today. Uh, have I got it right? And, and so, uh, no, and, and you may be right. And listen, that may be a legitimate reaction, but I also think um, you, the, exactly the reason you shouldn't panic, right? Because first of all, I'm in the camp right now that it's not going to be any worse at the variants and that the, the drug makers are going to be able to tweak these mRNA vaccines to, you know, to handle whatever is coming at us. I'm in that positive, optimistic camp that that's the way it's going to be. I'm not in this, you know, doomsday, it's all mm -hmm. over camp. So, um, yes, but I would agree you're right. When we get hit with this, look, we weren't talking about this on Monday or Tuesday. We weren't talking about this right. last week. This right. came out of the blue on a day when all of us were away from our desks. Yeah. And suddenly we wake up and we get hit with this in the yeah. face this morning. Yeah. Like, what the heck is going on? Okay. Well, by the way, the, the market is down to, once again, to its session lows. But it, we'll see what happens. Don't panic. As Kenny wisely no. said, this is not the time for that. It's a half trading day, too. So a few movers can really uh, make a big difference in a market like this. Kenny, thank you. Have a great weekend. Appreciate it. You too. And, and